Despite a tough first day, Disneyland was an unquestionable success with the public. And like many of Walt's ventures, it quickly found itself becoming a part of American culture. As a result, it was no surprise that filmmakers of the time began to want to use Disneyland as a backdrop for some of their stories. Ever the overseer of the image he had created for the Disney name, Walt pretty much shot them all down. He wasn't entirely opposed to the idea of filming in Disneyland. After all, he had shot plenty of episodes of the Disneyland TV series there. It was more about controlling the content. Perhaps the most notable example was around 1960 when famous director Alfred Hitchcock and the screenwriter Ernest Lehman worked on an idea for a murder mystery set at Disneyland. Walt apparently learned about this project in a trade paper and would make a public statement that Hitchcock, under no conditions, could shoot the murder mystery at his park. As Walt would say, people don't get murdered at Disneyland. A few years later, another film proposal would come across Walt's desk, and this time things would go differently. In 1962, Universal Pictures was in the process of putting together a remake of the 1934 comedy Little Miss Marker, which starred Shirley Temple. The remake was called 40 Pounds of Trouble. It was the story of a casino manager named Steve McCluskey, played by Tony Curtis, who quickly found himself taking care of a five-year-old girl named Penny Piper, who was abandoned at the casino by a down-and-out gambler. Towards the end of the film, McCluskey and his love interest, Chris Lockwood, take Penny to Disneyland for a day, where McCluskey finds himself trying to escape a private investigator who is trying to serve him legal papers. It sets the stage for a climax in which McCluskey is comically chased all around Disneyland. The story, ultimately, was far more family-friendly than the other film proposals Walt had received up until that point. And the producers of the film took the extra step of finishing the script before sending it to Disney, rather than just pitching the overall concept. The benefit of getting to see exactly what they wanted to film at the park helped him in making a decision. Walt ultimately agreed, marking the first time in the seven years since Disneyland opened that an outside production would be allowed to film at the theme park. However, he had a few changes to make to the script first. For instance, the original script called for a scene in which a young woman at the park complains to a policeman that a man in the crowd gave her a, quote, affectionate pinch. Walt scrapped the idea and left a note saying, not in Disneyland. Besides, we don't have policemen, just security officers. Another change involved removing a part in which the private investigator leaps out from the Skyway buckets to try and catch McCluskey. Walt said there would be, quote, no leaping out of any of the sky rides. I don't want the kids who see this film to get any wild ideas. Lastly, the movie originally ended with the private investigator catching McCluskey while on the Disneyland Railroad. Walt instead suggested, why not let Tony and the girl end their visit, with Tony thinking he's safe at last, then the private detective grabs him just outside of the exit gate. The producers, not about to argue with Walt Disney, did just that. Since they had to close a number of rides and there was tons of big bulky equipment, the shooting of the film ended up being a pretty disruptive experience for guests at the park. And it posed some challenges for the filmmakers too. They ended up having to create a custom automatic camera and lighting rig that they mounted to the front of the Matterhorn bobsleds in order to film the characters riding the attraction. On top of that, once the filming was complete, it was pretty much out of Walt's hands. The result was a number of inconsistencies. My personal favorite is the shot of the three leaving Tomorrowland where they pass by a random phone booth and some guy with a folding table trying to sell nine hats and a bouquet of fake flowers? Beyond that, even the marketing for the film had mistakes. The Baltimore Evening Sun, reporting on the film, teases that, quote, Tony and his companions take in all the rides and sights, running into the legendary Disney characters the Mad Hatter, Bugs Bunny, Mickey Mouse, and Alice in Wonderland. Between the inconvenience it caused guests at the park and the final product having a few issues that Disney had no control over, it would be no surprise that Walt wouldn't open the floodgates for other studios to shoot their films at Disneyland. In fact, it would be 34 years before another film would be allowed to shoot at the park, and that would be Tom Hanks' That Thing You Do in 1996, which featured a very, very brief montage of the park. Of course, that wouldn't be the last time a film was shot at Disney, and it doesn't account for the multiple times smaller productions tried to secretly film at the parks without Disney knowing. As for 40 Pounds of Trouble, 
It premiered to mixed reviews, and it didn't do particularly well at the box office. As history would prove, it turned out to be a pretty forgettable movie of the era. It just goes to show you that the allure of Disneyland can only take you so far.